Hey, what's going on? <laughs> so it's me, Andrew. I'm going <laughs> to talk to you a little bit about anxiety today because over the last two or three years, I've, been, I've read a lot of books, had a lot of experiences. I actually used to be a really, really, really anxious person. Like literally every thought I had two or three years ago was, were all anxious thoughts. In fact, most of my thoughts from the age of, I'm 24 now, 19 to 20. Two twenty, two and a half ish, and a lot of them up to now even were anxious thoughts. Now I'm not so much. I've gotten a lot better, and I thought I would share the knowledge that I've gained from years of experience with you. I'm probably going to take on a more serious tone in this video, but I might not. Who knows what could happen? Okay, so I've got some book recommendations. First. Well, actually, you know what? Let me first talk about anxiety a little bit and then I'll give you recommendations later, okay? <sighs> there are different states of mind that your brain can be in at any one time. You can be in a very, very logical, analytical state of mind, which I'm actually not in right now, by the way. But you might be watching this. You probably are, actually. Some of you aren't, but if... Most of you viewing this are probably the INTP personality type because that's my most popular video right now. But there are other types of people. There are people who are more social and they're just lighthearted. They don't think too much. Now, if you're an INTP, you probably think those people are silly or stupid. You know what? I'm not going to make any assumptions. And then there are people who are just more sensitive. They're not really analytical, but they do worry about things. And those are typically the anxious people, by the way. But practical, like logical people are also very anxious. This is all based on science, by the way. This is just me relaying it in a very down to earth way. And then you've got more witty in the moment kind of people. They're not really lighthearted and they're not really sensitive and they're not very analytical. They just like to do stuff. You know the types, right? People who do all projects all the time or people who just like to do stuff. They don't sit around going, hmm. And they're not like blah, 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 blah. with their friends all the time. And they're not like, I'm worried about the future all the time. They're like, let's get this done. We're going to do it. Okay. And these are associated with different states of mind. So now can you guess what I might be about to tell you? Huh? Well, think about it. I said that emotional people, sensitive people, tend to be in a specific state of mind. And then logical people are in a different state of mind at, at that moment because everyone has all of these facets in their personality because obviously you get analytical sometimes and you think about things and how to do them and you think about the logical cause and effect of things sometimes and other times you're worried about something you have to uh, do tomorrow or s your life is falling apart hopefully not that and other times you're, you're just out with friends you're not doing any of that you're just having fun right and then other times you are anxious wait I just said that other times you're taking action and you're just doing stuff. You're too, you're too busy to think. You're too busy to worry and you're too busy to be lighthearted. You're just, you're right on it. Okay. So like I was saying, when you're in a more emotional, sensitive place, you're more likely to be anxious. Or when you're more in a logical place, you're likely to be anxious. Now would be a good time for a book recommendation. Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. <clears throat> this book, the main premise of this book is that we have two different elements to ourselves. And then there are three parts that talk about two different, no, three different versions of these two selves. The first one being like our intuitive versus logical systems. And then we have like our rational versus rational minds. These are closely related, by the way. And then you have our momentary self versus our remembering self. And these are all correlated. It's like the remembering self is the more logical mind 
and the rational self is the more logical mind. But the thing is, your mind is not static. It, it's dynamic. In any, at any moment, you could be in any state. Okay? Like, system one, which is the intuitive, it's like... It generates impressions, feelings, inclinations when endorsed by system two. Then they become beliefs, attitudes, and intentions. For example, just one line from the book. And the big thing I got this from from this book when it comes to anxiety, I actually got multiple things, but one of the biggest things, maybe I should just talk about all of them. You know, I will. So the first thing is that your psychology is symmetric. So when you smile, If you hold it long enough, you feel happier. Or when you sit up straight for long enough, you feel more confident. Actually, they did a study where, the, okay, here's how it went. People had an iPhone, a laptop, and nothing in this experiment. Okay, those were the three groups. And so just think about it. The person on the iPhone is kind of crouched down, the person on the laptop sitting like this, the person with nothing is probably in back, okay? And what they did is the experimenter did not give them one of the items they needed for an experiment and they were testing whether or not they would go up and ask for the item to the experimenter. Something like half the people without anything who were just sitting there went up and asked. Something like 16, 20% of the people sitting on a laptop went up and asked. Not one person with an iPhone got up and asked. And you know why? It's symmetric. Open body language, open mindset. Closed body language, closed mindset. Pay attention to every little thing you do and it's an indication of your state of mind. Think of it like that. Your body language, if you can pay attention to it, it's better to pay attention to your body language to see what mood you're in than to actually try to feel what mood you're in because feelings and your physical state are not always the same thing like this there's the same physical state represents happiness we don't the same physical state for anxiety it is for excitement too okay so like the same signs a lot of them and so different there you can have multiple emotions associated with a given physical state depending on what you're thinking about at the moment or what you're focused on. And that's why that study came out where if you think of stress as a good thing, it actually affects you differently. That's why. Okay. So that's the first thing from the book. The second thing, let's see. Wish I could pause the video. <clears throat> oh yeah. When your mindset is focused on something like you're when you are focused on something and you are vigilant about it and that is what your mind is on and you are completely aware that is what is called a state of cognitive strain and he talks about cognitive strain versus cognitive ease in this book and in a state of cognitive strain you're thinking hard and you tend to be in a bad mood and on the flip side in a state of cognitive ease, that's when you're not thinking, you're just flowing with things, you're being intuitive, like I am right now, actually. Which you can only do, by the way, if you haven't memorized. So that's why I don't talk from any notes or anything, because you can't be your authentic self on camera if you don't have things instinctively part of yourself that you're saying to people. Like, you've seen videos, right, where people are like, blah, 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 blah. Okay, they don't do, they don't do that. They're like, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And that's because they're going off of notes or they're trying to follow a specific speech. Or in speech class, you've been in speech class, right? Where it's just so boring because the people aren't into what they're doing. So my point with the cognitive ease versus cognitive strain thing is that the people who think a lot tend not to be happy. So people who are very analytical and logical tend not to be happy. Remember I was talking about the different types earlier? So the more logical and emotional people are the ones who tend to be more anxious. And on the flip side, the more people, lighthearted, vibey people who just, and the people who do stuff, they're different brain states, you see. 
and the lighthearted vibey people and the action people are the cognitive ease they don't they're flowing with things more versus the people who think a lot I should mention one thing and that's the fact that a state a cognitive strain versus cognitive ease is not necessarily better cognitive strain is thinking and you're analyzing but what are you analyzing for? I'm not going to go into that, but I want to ask you that question. What do you gain from analyzing versus just relaxing and vibing with the moment? There is no right answer. Just think about it. Uh, was the th Oh, the third thing now is the last part, the last part of the book, the two selves part. He's talking about happiness and the momentary self versus the member, remembered self, the experiencing versus the memory self. And the experiencing self is the intuitive system one that he talks about in this book, the state of cognitive ease. And the state of cognitive strain is the rational thinking, analytical thinking in terms of stories and the meaning of things. Remember that question I just asked you? Keep that in mind. Maybe think about it after the video, because if you try to think about it while I'm watching, it kind of screws with your ability to pay attention, okay? So, <clears throat> what I'm telling you here, I'm not gonna recommend any other books, I've said enough, but what I'm telling you here is that whenever you get analytical or when you are worrying, it tends to snowball on itself and you actually train your brain to think that way. And that's how I was for years. I was so extreme that I didn't laugh. I was always in a down mood, but the way I, if you're an INTP, you may relate to this. If you're in a down mood, you kind of withdraw and more extroverted type outgoing outspoken people will I'm getting better at this by the way and this is something you can train which is what I'm leading up to here more outspoken people talk to their friends you know and they open up and that's called social vibing and they actually do stuff to get rid of it <clears throat> so my point here and this is what I've been leading up to this whole, whole time is you can actually train your brain to flip and build stronger pathways in the areas of getting things done. So like, you know, that state where you do things and kind of flip out, you're too, you're too focused on what you're doing to think analytically, or I've never done drugs myself, but if you smoke weed or something that kind of puts you into that state, but it's fake because you're biasing the brain with outside chemicals. So weed is not the solution here, okay? Rewire your brain, or alcohol, rewire your brain when you are in a natural state, and that is what will get you where you need to go. So what I'm saying is, instead of um, <clears throat> thinking about it within your head and not talking to anyone, well, actually you should, You, but I'll get to that in a second. First, Make sure you are spending at least five or six hours of your day, seriously, doing stuff that is very social. So you're, you're around people just to be around people, okay? There, unless the reason is literally to remove anxiety, but don't think of it while you're around them, okay? Like, don't think, it's training. I should speak from experience here. If you haven't been there for a while, you're not going to easily get into that state. And it may take you a while and many times of exposure. So you may even have to start with just like 20 minutes a day around people if you haven't done it for a while, okay? And over time, expand it. And it will rewire your brain. It'll ch literally change your thinking habits, like the thoughts that come up to your head. Um, at, that's your intuitive system talking to you. Read the book. Read the book. And over time your mind will learn to effectively balance between 
when it because this is called emotional intelligence and social intelligence those are just as important as analytical intelligence you have to bring it all together okay so to develop your emotional and social intelligence spend time around other people vibe with them don't like try to force analytical threads in a conversation if you're one of those people who hates small talk like i used to there is a purpose for it there is meaning to it every type of thinking is important and you need well i shouldn't say that but i shouldn't say that you need to you definitely need to try it but you don't have to do it is what i'm saying And also it helps if you don't spend time around logical people or emotional people all the time. That's my problem. I grew up in this sort of bubble, and this may be your problem, where everyone around you was very emotional or worrying, and they were always analytical about things, or, you know, or when you were around people who were very social and open and relaxed, and people just kind of did stuff without thinking. You were like, what's wrong with those people? Why aren't they thinking about stuff? How come they don't worry about things? And you literally blocked it out. That has another, that's another thing about these brain states. Remember I was telling you that sometimes it's hard to even flip into that state if you haven't done it in a while? So it's going to be the same thing. Whenever um, you, you've been around people and you've been in that state, you're not even going to notice it that's how our minds work socially we filter out things and we don't even know we're filtering them out because it's intuitive read the book read the book thinking fast and slow by daniel kahneman i'm telling you so to cut to the chase take action like and if you're even this is very important listen closely here Thinking about what you're going to do later is a form of analysis. Worrying about what you're going to do or what's going to happen is a form of analysis, but it's more of an emotional one. Anytime you're like thinking about something and you're worried about it, that's when it's most important to do it. So if I'm like, oh, I got to go work out, I got to this, literally turn your mind off, ignore your thoughts. And it'll be hard at first because your thoughts will keep pouring in, but that's part of the retraining process. Get the thoughts out. And all I do is just shut my mind off and I drive, I do drive to the gym and I put clothes on and I do all that stuff, but I do not allow my mind to think at all while I'm doing it. And every time I do, I, I catch it and I turn it off. That's training your mind to get out of that analytical worry state because there's a certain part of your brain that's overpowering the rest. And when I do get to the gym and I warm up, I'm like, okay, I'll just warm up and I get on the treadmill for a few minutes just to warm up. And then when I start getting into my workout and I do squats and deadlifts and bench press and pull-ups and all the accessory exercises or whatever it may be that you're anxious about, maybe it's some girl or some guy or just anything, taxes, right? House foreclosure, whatever it may be. Do you think it's going to help you to think about that over and over and over again, or to actually just do something about it and train your mind to know how to take action? By the way, by the way, that's another thing I had when I first started doing this is I thought taking action was the wrong thing to do. Like that's the, the filters I was talking about. When you're in that state of mind, you literally cannot see. So it's very important that you train yourself to take action and just flow naturally with people rather than worrying or analyzing all the time. Especially if you're an INTP or whatever personality type is logical and introverted. Even extroverted sometimes because even extroverted, outgoing, outspoken people can be this way too. So I don't want to alienate anybody here. All right. And that, that's pretty much all there is to it. You just got to train your mind. Meditation is great too for helping turn off your thoughts. 
focusing on something, getting out of that state. And over time, you'll get better at it. I promise. I promise. Let me know what you thought. Thank you for watching. Or actually, you should thank me for watching if you got something out of this, right? Ah, yeah.